Hey everybody, happy Tuesday. Thanks for joining me today on World Autism Day. I hope you're rocking your blue, because I am. Um, I wanted to start off today with a few announcements. Uh, first, I want to give a quick shout out to Kayla. Um, she is also in the ABA field and she has this wonderful website called All, All Day ABA. Um, she's got a blog on there. She's got some other great resources. And if you're interested in, there's even an Etsy shop for some autism stuff. It's really cool. Um, go ahead and go check that out. All Day ABA. Also, like I said, today is World Autism Day. Um, so everybody will be lighting it up blue. If you are in the middle Georgia area, um, like I am, there is a bridge lighting ceremony at the Mercer Bridge today. Uh, the, there are specifics on the group page if you want to see that, or you can check out Central Georgia Autism. Also, because it is Autism Awareness Month, I thought that this would be a great opportunity for everybody who's out there to check out their local autism organizations, whether that's their local chapter of Autism Speaks, or like for us, we have Central Georgia Autism. Um, you can also check out things like the Easter Seals, and there are just so many great autism resources out there for everybody, whether it's something you just want to find out more information about services, or you want to learn more about autism itself. There's a lot out there for, for um, anybody interested. And as always, I want to remind you guys to sign up for the group page. Um, just join in, and I accept you. <laughs> um, also, the, make sure that you go to the YouTube page if you're on the YouTube page. You subscribe it and follow our videos, share the videos, and spread the the word about ABA and the wonderful uh, aspects and things up behind this particular uh, field of study. So today I wanted to talk to everybody about the functions of behavior. Now, a lot of the time we think of kids doing something out of the blue, like, oh, he's throwing a fit for no reason. Out of the blue, he just starts screaming, blah, blah, blah. Uh, well, there is really no out of the blue, guys. There is a function for that behavior. Um, I'll be going over four of those functions, and these are based off of the Functional Assessment Screening Tool by Iwata. Dr. Iwata has a wonderful um, interview video on the functions of behavior, if you guys ever want to check that one out. It's about an hour and a half long, though, so, and it's, it's, if you're not in the ABA if you're not studying ABA or in the ABA field, it can be kind of jargony and hard to explain or understand some, some of it. Um, but it's still a great watch if you're interested. And as always, I will copy and paste the useful links that I've shared, which also does include the FAST that I was just talking about. Oh, let's cancel. So what are the functions of behavior? Well, the uh, ones I'm going to go over today are attention, and I included tangible in that, whereas most of the time you'll see tangible separate in its own separate category. Um, escape, uh, there's also sensory, also known as automatic reinforcement. And Dr. Iwata includes pain attenuation in the FAST. So I wanted to talk a little bit about that. So what is, why is it important, the first thing? Well, like I said, behavior doesn't just occur out of the blue. There is a function for every behavior, whether it's to get attention or to get a toy that was taken away or, or to receive food. Um, to get out of a task sometimes um, just because the behavior feels good to them and maybe because they don't feel well. 
There's a whole bunch of different reasons. And another word for function is reason. So if it ever gets confusing, just think function, reason. So we also need to know the function of behavior because it will help us determine the best intervention or program for that behavior if we're trying to decrease that behavior. Um, and also, we'll know if we're, we're reinforcing um, certain behaviors accidentally or because we think it's for one behavior, our function is actually for another. So we'll start with attention and tangible. So these are is what it sounds like, attention. The function is to receive something from someone. So in this case, it's attention or a tangible item. Um, when it comes to these two, it's always something that has to be given to the child or the person. Um, so let's say an example is you're you've got a student or your your child is at home and they keep coming up and pushing you and pushing you and you just ignore them and they keep or they just keep pushing and pushing pushing you and you say what and then they giggle run off and they come back and start pushing you again until you interact or you interact with them well maybe the function of that behavior is they're trying to seek your attention or let's say it's a, look, with a tangible. So a tangible would be a food item, a toy, or an activity or something like that. So let's say you take a favorite toy away from your child and he starts screaming his head off because I know it happens every time my child receives his tablet and we take it away. Uh, so to stop the screaming, you give the tablet back. And so now we've reinforced that if I scream, I'm going to get my tablet back. And it's okay if you guys have done this. I've done it. Everybody accidentally reinforces something they don't want to. So don't feel bad. So another function of behavior is escape. Now, this is something that a child or person is trying to get away from. So it's something that they don't like. It's adversive to them, aversive. So meaning like um, we've talked before about the car alarm in your car when you don't buckle up. You're trying to escape the bell, so you buckle up. Um, sometimes escape behavior can show up as aggression. Um, it could also show up as the some of the same things that you see with attention. Um, so let's say uh, your child started, or you told them to do something, like, let's go, go clean your room, and the child starts screaming at the top of their lungs. Well, screaming is the same, you know, looks the same in attention as it does in escape because it's the same action or behavior, but it's serving a different purpose. The purpose of this this particular screaming behavior is because they don't want to clean their room and they're trying to get out of doing it. So they're going to scream. They scream and scream and scream until you say, OK, you don't have to clean your room anymore. So that would be an example of escape. Um, sometimes it's a task that's just too hard for a child or person to do or they don't understand. So they don't want to do it. Um, a lot of times you'll see like swiping of papers off their desks. I don't want to do this. I don't know how to do it. I'm not going to do it. Or same with the, the screaming. I don't understand what I'm doing. I don't, I don't want to do it. So I'm going to scream instead. And when it comes to attention and escape behaviors, we really do need to make sure we know which one's which when it comes to the behavior. Because if a child is trying to escape from a task and we put them in timeout, we've just given them what they want. They don't have to do the tasks. They're in timeout. Or you think the behavior is to get away from doing something. So you give the child attention and come to find out it was, actu uh, it was actually um, the attention they were seeking. So 
by com trying to comfort the child, say, hey, it's okay, you don't have to do that, you may be giving them attention, or it could be both. I mean, uh, it could be a little bit of both. I know when I've done the, the fast, that sometimes um, they can both score pretty high up there. It's a zero to, or, uh, zero to four scoring for each section. And sometimes they can both score fours, they can both score threes. So it could be something between the two. So we wouldn't want to try to figure out which, which function it, it serves before putting a new plan in place. Another um, function of behavior is sensory. Um, most of the time it's going to be referred to as automatic reinforcement. Um, but it's sensory, it's, it's essentially the same thing. Um, so this is going to be something that doing is reinforcing in itself. So something that feels good. So, or it's just something, and a lot of times it's a habit that we have. Um, for me, one of my automatic um, reinforcing behaviors is chewing my fingernails. I'm real, I've been bad at it since I was little. I still chew my fingernails right now. As you can see, they're little nubs because I've chewed them down to nothing. Um, I use this as a coping strategy for high stress times. So and most of the time, I don't even know I'm doing it. I catch myself chew it on my fingers when they start to bleed or they hurt. Or my husband swats up my arm and tells me to get my hand out of my mouth because I don't know I got it, my hand in my mouth. Chew it on my fingers. So that's an example of something that's automatically reinforcing. Another one is you can have positive reinforcement and negative reinforcement when it comes to automatic reinforcement. I know that's a lot of reinforcements. Sorry, y'all. So an uh, example of that positive automatic reinforcement would be, say, um, you like, or your child likes to flick their fingers or move their fingers like that, that feels good to them. So they're going to keep doing that. It's that's, they get positive. Um, it, it feels good and they've added something to their environment, whether it's adding in the feeling of their fingers, or it could be like the fingers in front of their eyes is something they see or feel that they like that'll increase that behavior. Um, example of automatic negative reinforcement is something that I know I do a lot. So get an eyelash in your eye and then you just rub at your eye until you get it out. Well, uh, the behavior of rubbing your eye to get out that eyelash will probably increase the, the likelihood that you'll rub your eye again next time you get an eyelash in your eye. So you're trying, you're removing the aversive stimulus, which is the eyelash from your, from your eye. And it's increasing the likelihood that you'll do it again. So that's what I mean by automatic negative reinforcement. You're taking something away to increase the behavior. And remember, when you're increasing, or when these are increasing, it's always going to be in the future with reinforcement. So when it comes to uh, sensory functions, um, this can happen anywhere. So if you've got a room with nothing in it, and your child is flicking their fingers in front of their eyes, there's probably a good chance that it's, it's sensory or automatic reinforcement. Uh, the last one that Dr. Iwata includes on the fast, and which I, I actually really do like incorporating this one, um, is pain attenuation. Um, I talk about this one because sometimes how we're feeling as health-wise can affect how we behave. Um, an example of that would be uh, when your little ones are teething and they chew on that teething ring um, or they're biting because it, their, their jaw hurts. They don't normally bite, but when they're teething, they bite you. So that would be an example of a, um, a behavior, a function of behavior based on pain. Um, another one 
Like sometimes you, you notice your child hangs on their ears or messes with their ears, but they don't do that behavior unless they have an ear infection. So that would be based on that pain attenuation again. Um, so that's just one thing to keep up there. You don't, that's not necessarily one that a lot of people incorporate. Um, but I, again, like I said, I like to, to keep that one on the list, especially since Dr. Iwata included it on the functional assessment screening tool. Um, definitely check that one out. If you, if you suspect that maybe your child's health could be impacting their behavior. Now, this does not mean a diagnosis is affecting their behavior. I'm not saying that autism um, is the is the function of behavior. It's a function of behavior. Autism is a diagnosis. It has nothing to do with functions of behavior. Everybody who behaves has a purpose for their behavior. I currently am by speaking to you on Facebook or YouTube or whatever you're watching me on, speaking to you guys now, the function of my behavior is attention. I'm trying to get attention for myself, for my hours. I'm also considering it tangible because I can use this for my practicum hours for training. So I'm trying to gain something from my viewers by performing this behavior. And I do not have a diagnosis of autism. So it doesn't matter if you're autistic or neurotypical. You all have a function for your behaviors. If me biting my fingernails is sensory or automatic reinforcement, um, say a bee flies in at my head, I'm going to run away. And I'm trying to escape that situation. So my running is an escape behavior. Everybody, again, I know I said it again. Everybody, regardless of your diagnosis, whether you're, you have no diagnosis or you do have a diagnosis, there is a reason and a function behind your behavior. So like I always do, I like to include my helpful links. There they are for you guys. There's some videos this time. And then I also included some links like Cornerstone Autism Center. Um, they had a really great breakdown of the functions of behavior. So if you didn't like how I explained it, they do a much better job. Um, again, I also included some YouTube videos and things like that. And that, that functional assessment screening tool. Um, you can use it at home if you want. So if you see a behavior that you can't figure out why your child's doing it, try out that, that, that fast and send it to me and let me know. Uh, you can contact me on the Facebook page, Ditter Remote Coaching Services, or you can comment on the videos on the YouTube page, Ditter Remote Coaching Service. I forgot the S. <laughs> or you can email me at DitterRemoteCoaching at gmail.com. So if you want, get, a, get in contact with me, share your data, share what you find out about the functions of your behavior or your child's behavior. Uh, also, as a final announcement before I go, as I mentioned, I am a student um, trying or working towards a degree in special education and that focuses in applied behavioral analysis. And if you guys are interested in any one-on-one -on -one family coaching services, go ahead and also email me or you can uh, um, personal message me on the Facebook group or just Facebook period, let me know. Um, and then we could set up either a Zoom conference or if you're here in middle Georgia, I'll be glad to come to you. Um, just let me know. And maybe we, I can help set, do that with for you and your family. Run that fast if you want. I show you guys how to collect data and also earn my hours so I can get my, my degree in ABA. Um, also, I would, if you're okay with that, I'd like to record it, send it to my professor. Uh, she is the only one that sees those videos besides myself, and they get deleted off the server. So you don't have to worry about uh, any of that. You do have to sign a consent form to for me to record these sessions, and you can revoke that consent at any time.
So just let me know. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. If you go, if you would share these videos and share my pages, I would appreciate it. Let's get out the word on ABA on Autism Awareness Month and World Autism Day. Spread the word. And you guys have a wonderful Tuesday. I look forward to talking to you guys next week. Goodbye.